So this video we're going to look at throttle bodies. We often hear about people fitting throttle bodies, but what exactly are throttle bodies? What's a throttle? What are the advantages to fitting a throttle body? What are the disadvantages to fitting a throttle body? And what effect does a throttle body actually have on the performance of your car? So these are all questions that we're going to be answering in this very, very specifically focused video. <laughs> So essentially a throttle is a device in the intake of the engine that controls the amount of air getting into the engine which effectively controls the engine speed. Less air means it can burn less fuel so it travels at a slower speed or it emits less power. So in a car the typical throttle body is a butterfly valve which opens and closes. Traditional throttle bodies in cars were operated by a cable directly connected to the accelerator. But in modern cars, with electronic systems coming into play, an electronic sensor monitors the position of the accelerator pedal and the throttle is then controlled electronically, which allows for a much smoother response. And the good engine can actually anticipate the driver's needs, so it can provide more or less throttle depending on what it's trying to achieve, be it fuel economy or better acceleration and performance. So these electronic throttles are often referred to as ETCs or electronic throttle control and the newer your car the more likely it is that you've got an electronic throttle system. So typically on the intake the air would go through a set of pipes and then it would be diverted off through a manifold into the ports on the head of the engine. So with the throttle that's controlling the overall flow of air but you've got to bear in mind that it's traveling at different distances along each part of the manifold. So for example the ports in the center of the engine block may well receive high Higher velocity and more air than the outside ports so there's a little bit of an inherent imbalance in the engine just by having the one throttle body so if you take the throttle bodies and you apply a different throttle body to each cylinder in the engine it gives you a lot more control over the power delivery and makes things much smoother so because each cylinder is now receiving a much more uniform air and fuel mixture it will generally respond better you'll get better power and it will be burning more efficiently also bear in mind that a throttle body itself is going to restrict airflow is taking up a little bit of space within that intake chamber so if you've got an individual throttle body for each cylinder that is much less detrimental there's a greater surface area going into each of the cylinders so there is certainly less drag on that air and most aftermarket throttle bodies are somewhat larger than the stock factory ones in many cases although there's so many exceptions out there and it really does depend on the design of the engine and the design of the throttle body another benefit you get with individual throttle bodies is the engine sound improves if you like to hear your engine particularly when it's on full throttle when you've got an individual throttle body set up so you've also got more flexibility when it comes to tuning your engine by altering the trumpet length you can effectively position the peak torque and the peak power band within the engine because the air is flowing in at a specified velocity at that rpm range and that can effectively be tuned just by adjusting the length of that intake trumpet. So what are the downsides of fitting individual throttle bodies to your engine? Well, the first obvious thing is the sheer cost that's involved. Individual throttle bodies are more expensive to buy in the first place. And because they are more fiddly and complex to set up, they generally cost more to install, unless obviously you're doing that yourself. So now that each cylinder has got its own throttle, and as we've said, the path the air takes into that cylinder is going to be slightly different for each of those cylinders you need to make an adjustment in the throttle body itself to balance out the airflow between each of the cylinders and that is quite a complex task there's a lot of work involved in doing that so in some cases an individual throttle body has a larger surface area but that larger surface area flows less velocity or flows air more slowly when it's at lower rpm so that can sometimes result in a drop in the low end torque or the low end power so in those instances the throttle body is boosting the top end power but it's somewhat at the detriment of your low end torque so that's certainly something to take into account but by adjusting the trumpet length you can actually mitigate that to some degree so in some setups we note that the engine is a little bit more challenging to drive at slow speeds the throttle is a lot more sensitive you sometimes need to apply a lot more throttle to achieve the same effect at those low rpm speeds and that can make driving in traffic somewhat more challenging but it's not really a big consideration in most applications so it's just something i'm flagging up because certain engines do manage 
manifest this problem with the low RPM driving issue. And also maintenance comes into it. You've got more complex system on the car. It's again subject to wear and tear. It needs adjustment when it comes to retune the engine and rebalance everything out. And just keeping everything clean and running efficiently requires more effort. So you've increased your maintenance costs a little as well. So we've spoken a few times in this video about the trumpet length and the trumpet length effectively alters the velocity or the speed of the air going into the engine. So often if you've a longer trumpet can sometimes cause slower moving air which will have beneficial effects at higher RPMs but at low RPMs that can rob you of power. But in the case of port injection it sometimes allows more time for the fuel to mix and atomize in the air depending obviously on the fuel system and the setup that you've got in your engine. So that can result in a more efficient burn. So another thing that can be adjusted is the resonance. Now the resonance is quite an interesting topic and it's certainly far more complex than I'm going to go into in this video but by changing the resonant frequency of the intake the engine note if you like you can actually alter its effectiveness at pulling that air in if you get that frequency just right it can enhance the airflow characteristics into the engine quite dramatically in some cases so having a longer trumpet or a shorter trumpet can affect the torque band so one might give you a lower end boost in the power and the other might give you a top end boost in the power but you're not going to get both it's rare to find a situation where you can increase both the low and the high end rpm power band just by fitting individual throttle bodies to your engine so it'll also have a bearing on the fuel economy which is interesting if you want to extract as much energy from that fuel as possible then changing the trumpet size on the throttle body can actually aid a better atomization of the fuel and improve the efficiency of the engine so if you're into performance tuning then maybe even throttle bodies is a way to go but you're not doing that to increase the top end power generally you want to boost the low end power of the engine so i hope this video has been interesting to you it's always interesting to me when i start looking into the mechanics of an engine how they work and every time i learn something i suddenly realize there's so much more out there to learn on the subject there's so many complexities and little nuances and often exceptions with different types of engines so please stay tuned if you haven't done so please subscribe and if you could just boot that like button that really help us to get out there so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video